Welcome back everyone. So, as you can see from the line on the dock, you might be able to guess what kind of prep we're doing today. This is stretching lines out for our upcoming tanner season. Um, this is some 916 blue steel. We built this, uh, this holder contraption yesterday, or day before yesterday actually. It's working pretty good, just a two by four and uh, screwed together in a little A-frame. So we're stretching out 25 fathom lengths of crab line. Um, one way is 25 fathoms, and then we have a pulley on the end, and back this way is another 25. Which one? So, this one? Uh, this one here. So Tristan will chop that, chop this one that's stretched here, and after he finishes that, he'll stretch out the next piece uh, to the pulley, and on the pulley where it bends, he'll tape that spot off and cut it, and that'll be 225 fathom shots. <laughs> still fairly early, uh, well, in the winter I guess. Um, it's not too cold out yet, so it's a good time to get this kind of gear work done, the outside stuff. We've had uh, a couple of years where we've stretched line out in the, uh, in the blizzard, so while I do enjoy that kind of fun, I do enjoy not doing it just as much. <laughs> so. So it's nice to get it done early on. This was a 1200 foot shot, 1200 foot uh, long coil of line, which will make up uh, 200 fathoms. So eight shots in total. Go see what Tristan's doing on this end. So we previously measured out 25 fathoms to the front of this boat over here. And there we set up just a little snatch block. like a little bit extra on the coil this time, or on the spool rather. Last time we opted to make them a foot longer and actually came up short on one shot, which is a little bit annoying, but that's how it goes. Maybe we'll tack this on there. We'll see. It's pretty hard stuff to splice. We have a different plan for it too. Um, using this blue steel as bridles for our new buoys for for our pot so um, it all works out in the end I suppose so uh, now that that's done we get to coil these lines up it's always a little bit temperamental coiling new line you gotta 
make sure you make your loops the uh, correct size for what you plan on uh, coiling on deck when it's coming through the hauler. So, especially on the very inside right there, it tends to curl up just like that. So you gotta take your time and make sure it doesn't do that. Otherwise, it'll just bring you misery when you're trying to coil on deck to bring in the pots. So, so we'll do that now. You gonna coil? No. <laughs> this is my job anyway. He did all the stretching. Yeah, I got my exercise. Hey, don't be stealing my job, man. So, usually you just break it over a rail or something to uh, coil and bend down and do it, but it's actually easier on New Line standing up because the then as you drag it in, you just turn it with this hand. And of course you could always put it in a crab block or something like that, but then how will I get my exercise? Anyway, like I said, patience is key. No need to rush. This whole process took us probably 30 minutes, so. Not a huge time investment anyways. Now if you were doing 50 fathom shots, that might be a different story because it would actually be a little bit of friction, friction going down the dock. That would be the real workout. Yep. shot 25 fathoms we'll actually bring these in the emerald isle there and burn these ends so they don't fray and then retape them too uh -huh. now we just gonna do that like a dozen more times <laughs> seven more times who are these characters Alright, Tristan's gonna have a turn here. I'm too awkward. I've got that uh, stage fright. A little bit smaller, actually. Yeah, just adjust to be like inside that circle. I misguided you. There you go. Just like that. And then we'll just flip it over and recoil the part that you already did. All right, that's four down already, so a couple more minutes to have the rest of these done. All right, so we're over here in the boat shed. Got our lines here, we'll burn. Dad's back there doing a little mold making action. So we'll get burning here. It doesn't take too long, just gonna torch the ends of the shots and then retape them. Keep them from fraying and uh, yeah, 
I guess that's it. Keep them fraying. I'm gonna put a mask on because the burn fumes are kind of noxious and I want to be inhaling it. By the way, if you've been following along on the boat build so far, you know that this mold here, this form has been used many times and now it seems it's found yet another purpose and that's to hold lion. <laughs> All right, careful of this uh, dead cat, don't catch on fire. Let's torch it up. Fire. Fire! Yeah! So I'll just burn the ends like that and I have just a T-square ruler here to round the edges off so they don't stick out all jagged like. Do that and then take some black electrical tape. And rewrap the end.
So you may be wondering why I'm flattening the edges of this uh, end. They tend to mushroom when they get burnt like that, so uh, keep it from poking holes in the tape. Makes it easier to tape uh, afterwards. Got those sharp bits on there. Just two wraps and it's good. Okay, so we'll finish up the rest of these and then we'll stow them away over on the fishtail. Down one of the forward holds and uh, revisit them when we tie them together for our, uh, our crab shots. So, we'll be back. Hello everyone. Hi everybody, welcome back to EIS Alaska. Well, it's a beautiful morning. We're out on the Tanner Grounds and uh, we're gonna start fishing today. We actually set our gear yesterday at noon after about a two week stand down as we negotiated better prices with the processors. And, uh, and now everybody's got gear in the water and we're all starting to fish. Yeah, it was a bit of a hectic scramble as usual, so didn't really get to film launching the pots, but uh, we will film today of hopefully picking some good pots. We had a couple of uh, test picks yesterday and it's looking promising. Yeah, it looked pretty good, so we're excited to get out here. Um, as you can probably tell, we're on the little boat. Uh, we weren't able to get the Emerald Isle ready in time for the season, unfortunately. Um, we tried our hardest, but just didn't come together so yeah there's just a little bit too much to do on her so yeah but yeah things were pretty close but the reality of it was we just wouldn't be ready um, even with the stand down it, it bought us a little extra time but it wasn't enough so we just uh, put everything on the little boat um, we're only fishing 20 pots that's all we had of the smaller cone style pots so I guess we're at a bit of a disadvantage but that's okay Mm -hmm. um, and fishing's supposed to be good, so I guess relevant info on that uh, with the five million pound quota, uh, the pot limit's bumped up to thirty, and that's just for this year, probably. So, well, definitely. Yeah. So um, I mean, folks that are, have been following along, and and we've gotten a lot of questions about it actually too. Is uh, is if we would have a tanner season here? Um, yes, we do. So Alaska is divided up into different management areas, regions, and the area that's closed is the Bering Sea, uh, the Bering Sea Go region. Ahead. And so that's, that's managed separately from the Kodiak area, completely different stocks, completely different quota. And so that's why we have a fishery this year. It's actually the biggest uh, GHL or guideline harvest level that we've had um, since uh, late 80s and so it's a, it's a big quota that we're working on here and uh, so we're excited about that so anytime the uh, I think it's four million pounds anytime the quota exceeds four million pounds they'll bump it up to a 30 pot limit instead of a 20 so that's where we're at this year is 30 pots are allowed per vessel to be fished mm -hmm. and um, is that just an effort to get the crab caught quicker without I believe so with less impact to juveniles yeah yeah there's a few different you know there's efficiency factors that come into play as far as um, catch rates for vessels uh, it allows guys to harvest the crab quicker to get it to market quicker and go on to other fisheries at any rate uh, yeah so we just have the 20 pots uh, we pulled one yesterday it had a three and a half hour soak on it uh, 77 nice big crab so we're excited to get over there again. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of current there and it's uh, it pulled down a couple of pots. So we're hoping that uh, the buoys will be there at slack 
and we can get them mm -hmm. and get them on board. It's really <laughs> a bummer because there's crab there. There's mm -hmm. a lot of crab there. Um, we'll just have to see what happens. We might end up bringing most of the gear back up into the bay or fish some areas over there that hopefully don't have as much current. So uh, we're not too worried about losing the pots. Um, we can drag for them. And uh, one thing about the other ones that were actually down, just the trailer was, was sticking up. They didn't move an inch. They're, they're right where they should be. So I'm confident that the pots are there and that we'll get them back. Fingers crossed, anyways. Yep. Um, yeah, gear loss is a bummer. <laughs> it does happen, unfortunately, um, to everybody at some point. And so we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, we do have uh, we do have biodegradable panels on on the pots. So in the event that you do lose a pot, there's uh, cotton twine sewn in to some of the meshes that will rot away after not even a month, and uh, open that panel up and allow those crab to escape. So um, the impact to the environment isn't that bad, but. Uh, it'll have a big impact on our fishing if we don't get them back mm -hmm, <laughs> for sure <laughs> <laughs> so so we'll be out there here before too long um the pot limit is the only thing that changed uh the uh the the time format stays in place we can only fish from 8 a.m to 6 p.m that's the only time you can operate gear that includes pulling gear and setting gear off your vessel so if you don't have your gear in the water by 6 p.m. You gotta wait till the next morning. Um, we got three of our pots back yesterday afternoon and, and ran them up into the bay and dumped them off about 5.30. And, uh, and then we just came over to this nice peaceful little spot and anchored up with a couple other guys. Yeah, it was a nice night. Yeah, yeah, it was very nice. So our first pot's just right around the corner. It's about 20 minutes away. We'll fire up here after too long and uh, grind up a little bait and mm -hmm. go get see ready what for we our have. day. We're just going to kind of spot check a couple on the way out the bay, try and get an idea of what's here in case we need to bring some gear back in here. Hopefully, we'll have a better idea of where to put it and um, see just see what happens. Yeah, I'm excited for today. Yeah, we're not sure how long this this fishery is going to last. Um, if guys are on crab like that pot yesterday it could go pretty darn quick mm -hmm. um, guys fishing big square pots I'm, I'm guessing that that would probably be a, a 300 crab pot overnight or maybe more yeah it's yeah easily huh yeah um, so, there's there's quick. a lot of crab out here so maybe we'll once see. the once the big biomasses get scooped up it, I suppose it goes more into a slow fishery yeah way, it'll slow it, down it, a little bit the first couple the of days is is what really a lot of crab will come on um today and tomorrow and probably the next day mm -hmm. and so we'll see where we stand there the forecast is really good we've got good weather um it's tuesday now and uh we've got good weather through friday good traveling weather too which is really um really a, a good thing for us if we fill up we'll be running to town to get these crab off as quick as possible um once the line starts to form in town then it's really going to slow things down that could determine the pace of the fishery mm -hmm. honestly if it but doesn't close right away um guys are going to be in town and there's going to be a, a line and it, it could be days before you get your crab off at that point and and that will slow down the pace of the fishery and uh, it might stretch it out so it kind of just depends on the c holding capacity of the fleet i think mm -hmm. and also just how quickly things go in the first couple of days for us our game plan is to get enough crab on board that we feel comfortable running home get in before it gets stormy and get back out and and that's our game plan and so hopefully we have a couple of good days and we get fairly well filled up and we'll dash home. Mm -hmm. I guess we're probably about eight hours from town. About eight hours from yeah, town. Yeah, thereabouts. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> so, yeah. Well, hopefully we have some good fishing today and you guys enjoy the, the content and we thank you for coming along. 
yeah, uh, be sure to like, like and comment and subscribe and stay tuned because this is going to be a multi-part series, I imagine. So. Yeah, I suppose so. Can't really see much, but a couple of guys moving around. And our friend Darius over there, Dave and Louie, shout out to you guys. Alright, so I'm going to get geared up and start chopping some bait. What's going on out here? Bait time. <laughs> we got herring and we got salmon. The herring must have been kind of cleaned out or something. We usually have some like sardines or sori to kind of mix in, but herring are good. We got good scent. At least they have some nice codfish for hanging bait. Yeah. What's this wonderful thing right here, Tristan? That would be a bait chopper. What yeah. happens if you don't have one? You have to chop it all by hand. <laughs> and it's cold and it's exhausting. Like a, a big cleaver. And... Mm. <laughs> For about an hour we heard some of these other boats cleaving away this morning. One of these guys over here, you can hear the distinct echo. <laughs> chunk, 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 chunk. Yeah, so this is basically just a rotating drum. It's got little, uh, oh, you probably can't see in there, but it's got little cup shapes. Oh, yes, of course. It's got little cup shapes on there that uh, gouge the bait. Just driven by a hydraulic motor. This is kind of the old school cheese grater type bait chopper, they call them. Um, they make better ones now, but this is a freebie for us. So we just, uh, we got it from a friend and just rehabilitated it. Put a little bit of money into it. Still works really good. Yeah. Um, so it's got a, a door on it right here, mat closes, and the bait that gets sucked past it and doesn't get gouged out by the cups and fall into the inner drum here. They just build up on the outside here eventually they'll just kind of get full and it won't suck bait through and not grind it and then any big chunks to pass through you can just kind of toss them back inside here and we can bring the rest of our gear up here after we get it recovered yep and uh, and we'll just go from there some some of our other pots out there were fine we, we drove over them uh, 
last night, uh, late afternoon, on the way over here, and uh, they were up, they were okay. It was just about three of them that we were worried about here. So, yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah. I'm confident we'll get them back. It just might take a few days. It might take a couple of days for the other guys to get moved moved away a little bit. There's quite a few pots close by, and so it's pretty hard to drag for it right now with that other gear in the way and not end up hooking up on them. So, if we get a little clearing around us, then we'll drop our, our grapple hook down there and do a couple circles around it. Should snag buoy and be on our way. Yep. And hopefully they'll be brimming with crabs. Yes, indeed. All righty then. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Beautiful tanners. They'll be going and joining the gang.
measuring crab, we have these crab sticks. Uh, five and a half inches is a legal tanner crab. So that's from the outside spine to the outside spine on the edge of the shell. So you just put your measuring stick on one end. If it doesn't go over the other end, you're good. Like this one, obviously it'd be a undersized crab because it doesn't hit.
all that's left of a hanging bait. It's uh, basically half a cod, or a quarter of a cod, a third of a cod. I think it was a midsection of a big one. Much skin and bone. 